slash computer technology teacher now for long enough to get the letter opener, <laughs> to get the lamp, and I'm up to the watch. So there's something to share. Um, and I do teach computer technology in theater, which gets a lot of people looking at me kind of going, huh? So that's interesting, they always say. And then they tell me, uh, I could never do what you do which you might have heard too, and most of the time they're right. They could never do what we do. So, and I'm grateful that you decided to come here. Thank you for taking your time here. Hi guys, come on in. Hello. You're welcome to use your computer or use mine. The login is Go Eagles if you use it. Okay. So, um, there's also a plug underneath if you need to plug in. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference between PowerPoint and Google Slides. Sorry, we have a very short sleep span on here. Um, I use a lot of Google Slides now to build materials that I use here in class. I love PowerPoint. PowerPoint is the workhorse of slideshows. You can do so many things with it graphically that you can't do with any of the online products. But the problem is you can do so many cool things graphically that it makes an incredible amount of memory and it's very hard to share unless you just send a link and it's saved online anyway. Um, I do like PowerPoint 365, which is the online product, but I don't love it because it's not as intuitive as PowerPoint or as Google Slides. So that's why I kind of tend towards Google Slides. A lot of your teacher pay teacher products are created through Google Slides. They are not created through um, PowerPoint. Again, because it's much easier, it's a much lighter version graphically on your computers. So, um, I'm gonna be following this sheet if anybody wants to see what it is. We've already covered basically the first three parts of it. Uh, the other part I like about Google Slides is it's not dominated by that old, torturous Times New Roman, <laughs> which always drove me nuts. You know, um, I do like some graphic design. I am not brilliant at it, but I know that Mosimo Vignelli, who is one of the leading graphic designers through the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, used to only use six fonts. And they were a century, which is what you used to have to send a document to the Supreme Court in. You had Times Roman, which was before Times New Roman because that was what the Times newspaper used. And then you used Bodoni and um, Helvetica, which were both kind of newer looking, and then Futura. And I remember what the last one is because I know this is going to be life changing. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> but going online here, of course, there's many ways you can get to Google Slides, particularly if you go through Chrome. Of course, right here we have. Can everybody see where my mouse is being? Okay, that's called your waffle. You can click there. And if you scroll down, you'll find Google Slides. You can also type slides.google.net or .com. That will take you to it. You can also just, if you're in Chrome, you can just try type slides.new. And that's true of most of the Google products. If you're in Chrome, you can just put docs.new, you can do sheets.new, and it will take you straight there. Uh -oh. It's easy peasy, lemon sweet. Now, I will share with you, like I said, most people say they um, will be teaching computer arts and computers together. Um, but the thing that's really cool about my job is I have a lot of people who get super excited about what they get to produce with this. And one of the most exciting moments in a kindergartner or a first grader's life is when they realize they can change the size of the font from 20 to 24. Because it starts sounding like we just won the national basketball championship yet again in here. Um, I don't expect that kind of reaction. <laughs> you will get a good, hmm, wow, that's interesting. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, parts of Google Slide, you can see how it's laid out. Just some of the things are a little different here than they are in other places. For instance, one of the things I really like about it is it is kind of user-friendly as far 
as graphic design. I can actually create a worksheet on here, and it's very simple to do to make it printer friendly by clicking on File and going down to Slide Size. To do the same thing in PowerPoint, I have to click on Design Slide, which is not intuitive at all, and then I have to go to the section there and create the um, create the dimensions. So. Uh, for this, if I wanted to turn this into a worksheet for school, I could go to custom at the bottom. Did everybody see what I did there? I'm going to repeat it just so everybody can see. Click on file. Down here near the bottom it says page setup. Okay. And then I'm going to go down to custom. And I'm going to make it 8 point, or no, I'm going to make it 11 because I want 11 inches wide and 8 and it automatically, I need to switch that. You're right. Okay. Unless you're going to do it horizontal style or landscape style. And then change that to 11. And you automatically get the size that you can print out. You can also use it as um, a slideshow. It's just going to show it in the same dimension. So if you did something on here where you created a worksheet and you wanted them to follow along, then when you go to your slideshow, which you do up here at slideshow, it's the same size and same dimension that your students are going to use. All right, so um, I'm actually going to undo it, though. And the reason being, I'm going to look at, again, that whole how do we use this as a whole? So if I create a PowerPoint and I want it to be something I can work on offline, I can click on File and I can download and I can download it to a PowerPoint. The problem with PowerPoint and Google is they are not friendly to each other. They don't like each other's font. Google is very proprietary in their fonts, so if you do download it to a Google or to a Microsoft product, a lot of times it is going to change your font to what they think it should be. And then to do the same thing, you would just go to Microsoft PowerPoint. You can upload it um, when you do share. It'll show one of the things you can do for Google Slide. You can also come down to upload on your file as well. So it'll give you a choice. You can include PowerPoint and Google Slides. Um, so now creating the background for the slide, you have to make sure you don't have anything clicked on here because whatever you click on is what the computer thinks you want to talk about. So if you just click off on the slide itself or click on the background, you can change the background. You can make it different colors if you want to make it pretty to look at. You can also, if you're going to print it, it may be harder to, you may not have access to the printer color, but what you can do is choose an image. Again, it's a Google product. So you can go to Google Drive, and if you want to, I'm sorry, not Google Drive, you want to go to upload. Sorry. I missed the first step, Cindy. How do we get to the background page? I am so sorry. Okay, make sure that you are, either clicked here or mm -hmm. just clicked off of anything. You don't have anything selected on your slide. Okay. And then right here. Oh, I see it. Thank you. It's going to say background. Okay. And again, you can choose your colors. One of the differences between this and PowerPoint is PowerPoint will let you do a gradient. You do have a lot of themes to choose from over here that are going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. This one's really popular on teachers pay teachers because yeah. it does kind of have a certain thing to see. Um, if you also have, if you go online, Google Images, sorry. If you go online and you find colors that you like, you can actually use them as your background as well. So if you decide you want to choose one. However, if you want to go to Google Images and you want to do something a little more teacher pay teacher ish, you can do something like, um, let's say, uh, gray weave background. And you can choose something muted or 
or something, you just kind of can use. Mm -hmm. okay. When you click on it at the bottom, it's going to bring up the option to insert it. And click on done. And now it's your background. And then you also have the option to insert over that a shape. And you can write on shapes. And there I have my happy little look. And this one will print OK because it is a gray and white or black and white. Tell me if you don't have your color printer. So does anybody have questions so far? Do I need to go over anything? Okay, let's say you wanted to add an image to this slide. The nice part about images. Is you can go again, search the web. And um, Lori, what's something you'd like to put an image of in your how about a polar bear? Okay. <laughs> We're going to put a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> I like a song can change. <laughs> All right, so let's choose the cute little baby polar bear. And we can click on insert. Right there. It's a little big, and of course, whenever you have these dots around it, you can do some editing with it. But what's kind of fun about it is you can also crop to a shape. If you look right here, you have your crop image, and you can go to the shape. And let's say you wanted to do something a little more baby friendly. Um, one little clue about when you're editing something, if you hold down your shift key, it should keep your perspective, it should keep your ratio the right size. And then you can just kind of slide it over to the side here. There you have your cute little teddy bears. Or your rotation. All right. No, that was a nice one. So you can also write in shapes. So, um, so we've inserted an image. Now, if you want to add a timer, let's say you're doing something where you're going to put assignments on the board with this. If you want to add a timer so students can see, then what you can do is go to insert. And this time we're going to go down to video. And you have a choice. It automatically links to YouTube because it is a Google product. Um, let's say we're going to do a five minute timer. And you have all kinds of timers that you can choose. You click on that. And then you can resize it. You can make it smaller to go into the corner. I'm going to write it crazy because it doesn't match, but that's OK. Um, and the nice part is you can have it two ways. You can either have it where if you look right here, this is, of course, what you also have in PowerPoint, but it opens up immediately. You don't have to search for it. You can have it where it's going to start in your slideshow where you play. It starts on the click, and then you can pause it. You can also do, it's going to play automatically when you go to the slide. So you've got, the nice part about it, if you do it this way, let's say that you <coughs> duplicate them. Now, if you duplicate it in, um, let's say I'm going to do it on here, I'm going to do command, which is by your space bar, and a D, and that's going to give me the second play. Let's say I've got all the information on there when I do a slideshow. Okay, and then when I click, it automatically appears and it starts the timer, so they know that it started. The only recommendation I have with this is some of those timers on YouTube have horrible buzzers when you get done. <laughs> so just check out your timers when you're doing that. Okay. 
Another thing you might want to add is some music. So, which you can do. The nice part about um, adding music is that you can go right to YouTube again. And let's say we have classical music. You want to have deadhead music, that's fine. It's all up to you. And again, you're going to insert it as a video. But it can be so tiny, nobody sees it. And then you can just move it around. As long as part of it is touching the slide, it's going to work. And it will start either on your click or, again, when you play automatically. And that way, when you go to slideshow. That slides on. So, so just two ways you can add things with that. <laughs> of course. All right. Let's go back to our teddy bears here and talk for a minute about um, another reason that I do prefer PowerPoint because I can do word art on here. To do it, all I have to do is click insert and go to word art. And let's see. Um, Margaret, can you give us some positive words that we could type for our word at heart? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Do you want adjectives or that one? Up to you. It's okay. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. Um, exciting. It, exciting. <laughs> Comfortable. And comfortable. Okay. Now. It says, use enter to save, so all I have to do is hit enter, and it pops up here. Mm. And it gives me these, and that's as much as I can do. I can choose a new font on it, so if I don't want to do Arial, and I'm definitely not choosing Times New Roman, because I just don't like it. Um, I might choose Century Gothic, because it's easy to use. Another one that's really popular right now is one called Poppins. You have enough time. Oh, there What's nice about Poppins is when you look, sometimes your um, fonts are going to have different ways that you can do it. So if we wanted to make it nice and chunky, you can do it that way. That looks a little tight, so we can go back and edit this for a moment. Um, what is that feature, Cindy, that you use to? This is that? insert word. and word art. Insert so word insert. Oh, word That's what it automatically does. That's a good question. How does it look traced like this? Now, I'm going to only to do one more word. No. Well, one of the things that's kind of fun with it is um, if you look up here, everything that it would normally do for text, for instance, here you have your fill color because it is art. Let's say we want to change it to a fun color. Let's go with purple, go labels. And then we want to do the outline. We can do the eagle, let's see. I don't know how cool it's gonna Can't really see it. Let's do let's do pink just because you might be able to see it. Okay, so good pink and yellow. I mean pink and purple. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't teach art anymore. Um, pink and purple. The other thing is, um, let's say I'm gonna copy this and paste it. And this is one thing that might interest you if you have students who need to practice writing. So let's say I take out the fill, make it white again, and make this black again, or maybe I'll leave this. Let me get back here. Purple again, but I'm going to make this black. You can go and choose which size line you want it to be, and you can also choose if you'd like it to be a dotted line, so that it's something students can trace. So, any questions so far? Try the that knife. And part of it has to be you're on area. Yeah, it might also be reading your background. I usually start with that. If you do insist on doing a little curvy work with your um, with your 
design and your words, there is another website. It is called TroyTube.net. Oh, Troy. <laughs> um, TroyTube.net was built by a man who was angry at the domination of cricket over the crafting area. <laughs> So he created his own website to create some tools to download to Cricut. And one of the things you can do there is you can curve text. However, Troy has forgotten how to do things like let you actually select your fonts. All you can do is curve stuff. So, so if you want to um, just add this because you like it, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to say go Troy. So we have to go to Troy too? Um, you can if you want to practice the curving. This isn't absolutely necessary, but you can see he has different tools that you can do. You can do text under te or curve text over, add text, you can create your own monogram. Um, the way it works though is you can also You can adjust the text for how big or small the arch is. You can squeeze it. You can change how far apart the letters are from each other. You can move it up and down on the page. Right. Sorry. Okay. So you can play with that if you would like to. You just copy the image, go back to your slide, and paste it. And there you have Go Troy. Because he's amazing, delicious, exciting, and comfortable. <laughs> Not in a weird way, so please don't call him. <laughs> amazing PowerPoint that's not a PowerPoint it's a Google slide and I want to share it with my friends but here's one thing I don't want to do I don't <coughs> want them oh, before sharing. okay so I'm going to call this amazing Google slides okay I don't want them to have the capacity to um, edit it so there's one way I can do this. I'm going to copy the link, and then I'm going to paste the link. If I can see, can I paste. And you see right here it says sharing. Now, if you backspace all that and you type the word copy to this little <coughs> slash right there and hit enter. From now on, whoever you send that to will have to make a copy of it. They will not be touching your original document. So, and it gives it its own <coughs> original URL, so you don't have access, they don't have access, they've made a copy, they can edit as they need to. It's not yours. It's now proprietary to them. <coughs> can you show us that? Yes. Thank you. All right. So. Once again, I'm going to go to make sure you've got your document name. You're going to go to share. You're going to copy the link. Go to a new tab. Paste the link. Where, see this, this is where I'm backing up to is this little slash. And then I'm typing in the word copy. Now it automatically makes them copy it. And if you look, this one is not going to be the same. Every time it's going to give you a totally different. See how this one ends in NPJLS? And this one ends in something completely different, which is completely different from mine. 
so but if once they receive it, then they can make a copy and edit it? It will force them to make a copy, and then they can edit it. So that way they're not using yours. If you want they can edit it on it, right? They can yes. add things. Oh, okay. right. So they can do their own thing. One other thing that's really nice about this is if you look right here, if you do share one that everybody's editing on, right here it says last edit was three minutes ago. You can click on it. You're going to see when everybody edits it. So if you actually share it with other students, and this is true of any Google document that has that link, it's going to show you who touched that document and at what time. So if you share a link with students and they say, oh, I did this on it, their name's going to show up on that list of when the edits happened on the same document if, it's, if everybody's adding to the same document. It's not going to do it if they copy it, but if they, and that way if they say they did it and then you go on there and they're, they have no link to support it, then you've got something to show them. And what you can also do is when you do those edits, you can name this version of it. So, um, oh, okay. yeah, and then go in and you're gonna say like, um, let's say original. And then you go back here. So, it may edit it a little bit, you'll know which one's yours. So, Cindy, if, yeah. so if, 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 if you create a slide deck then, and you share it with students in copy form, they could then, like if they were doing, I just have a group thing coming up and I'm trying to figure this out now. Right. So if they share it with their group, within their group, they would just, they would be able to manipulate it. Right, within their they, group, could they could share it with each other. Right, they so can still share it. So every group could do that. Right, so you can yeah. see what the edits are. Yeah. What else? Well, that's if you want them to edit yours. But if you don't want them to edit yours, you want yeah. them to have like the original. Like, if you make, yeah, you make your copy. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Yes. So, but it's just so you can protect yourself. If you want to make a copy, they share it without being a copy. You would all be working on the same background. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we paste the Troy to, how do you paste the curve? When you go on to here and you got it the way you want it, you just right click on it and copy it. Yes. You can also email it to yourself, but I just like to copy it. And it will just do the words. It won't do the big box. Yeah. I don't know why this one is. Because oh, that's yeah. the page, page you can change the content page. Yeah. And it goes with that. Yeah, we've had a lot of information. Um, I'm just going to show you a few more things and then we can do some work in here if you would like to. Um, the first one is I'm actually going to go out of Google Slides for a moment. I want to show you a product called Google Keeps. I don't know how many of you use it. Google Keeps is an organizing tool. You'll see some of my craziness in my brain. Being a person who lists help, but if I just see a list, it, I will just walk away from it. I will make it and then I will forget it. So um, Google Keeps is pretty user friendly where those things are kind of concerned. So right now you're seeing this was my Google Slides professional development for everything I wanted to talk about. Creating a list is very simple. All you do is you go up here where it says take a note. You click, you give it a title, let's say example. And then down here, I have different things I can do. I can just write a note. This has been a great class. <laughs> awesome. Then what I can also do is where the three dots are, I can make a checklist. So, I can turn it into my shopping list. So, this has been a great class, and I need pineapples. Okay. Now, this one you might <laughs> notice is one of the kind of ones that you might see on Teacher Pay Teachers, and you actually have to pay people to do like a little topper like this. Um, but you can make your own, and it's super easy. So, I'm going to do a new note. I'm going to go back to Google.
Google Slides to do this. Um, you can do this with student nameplates. You can do this with any kind of document that you want to make that's an alternate size. So I'm going to type in slides.new. And for this particular one, I'm going to go and change the size. I'm going to do my page setup. And I'm going to make it a ratio of 6 to 3. So I'm going to say 6. Or actually, I'm going to do 6 to 2. To 2. And then apply. So now this is very tiny. But you see how it's starting to take the shape of this one. This is also the same size you might do if you're doing, for instance, uh, nameplates for students if you want to do individual nameplates. If you want to do things for other activities. Um, and I'll show you why this is important. I'm going to go and change the background and I'm going to make it a very bold color. So I'm going to make this one, I'm going to make it purple, the want bird. Done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to insert word art with it. And I'm going to call this one examples. And it does that. I'm going to go back to that pop-ins and I'm going to use that chunky one just because it'll look a little cooler. It's a little big. So I can just the size. And what's nice is if I use word art, if I just go to the corner, it's going to do the whole thing. So actually, let me undo that. Down my shift key here. So I'm going to hold my shift key to keep the ratio the right size. Okay. And center it. Now you notice that there's red lines popping up. Those are your guides to let you know. For instance, if I go this way, I know I'm still centered that way, but I'm not centered in the middle. And then if I move it over, now it's centered in the middle. So examples. That'll be perfect for what I want to say this is. I'm now going to go down here and I'm going to download it. But what I'm going to download it as is a JPEG. I've now turned it into a picture. And I can see right here, Untitled Presentation, it downloaded at the bottom. But let's go back to Google Keep. When I clicked on file, I went to download. Oh. And then you can choose to make it a JPEG, PDF, PNG. I tend to prefer JPEG over PNG because PNG is written so that they can actually write additional code into it, and that's how viruses can happen. So, um, so let's go into it. There it is. Okay, so we called this one example. I'm going to click on this little, if you notice right here there's a pin, I'm going to click on the pin so it will be near the top. And I can see it. Alright, to add this to the top, all I have to do is go where it says add image. And I will get the, oh, can I just also say one of the beautiful things about Google Slides is you don't typically have to spend any time waiting for it to update. Everything is done on the other side. So when you're doing that wonderful presentation with an assembly and the children are standing there waiting for their pictures to come up on the projector and then all of a sudden PowerPoint decides to update. It messes you up major. So now this is going to stay here. It doesn't edit anywhere else. And I can change that color. Now, if I want to add a little more pop to it, I can even change the color of the bottom. So now, that's an interesting looking list. That's when I might go, oh, I might actually complete these things. Have an amazing class and get pineapples. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Are you on keep? Okay. Oh, go to keep. Yeah, you go to keep. And then when you go to the bottom here, there's a picture. So you can click on that. Let's see where it has images. Click here and then. Um. So, so you can make them much more fun. Now, one more thing, because they are interactive and they're part of 
this whole Google suite, what you can do is if you look right here, I'm on this slide right here. I can click on the little arrows here. And it's going to show what I can attach this to. I can click on Google Keep. It's going to open all my Google Keep things. And I can just click on it. Done. I've now attached my slideshow to that Google Keep. So if I have a list of things that I've done and I want to work on that and that be part of my reminder, I've just attached that to Google Keep and it's going to have a link in it. So. So the slide so it's just pinned to that? Yes. And then it'll go back to that slide. Show. 
I'm going to go grab my computer. Any questions so far? Anything, anything I need to repeat on here? Six minutes left. And the reason I'm sending to use the, the very first thing you showed us with the sizing yes. is so that if we print, we're printing, we can print just like this, or we can print. Yes, it will print an eight and a half by 11 sheet for you. So if you do a worksheet and you put like fun little things on it, you can just move it around where you want it. If you do it in a, like a Google Docs, you try to do it in Word. The thing is, you have to work so much with the formatting to get it to work exactly where you want it that you can't add little flourishes or things you think might make it a little more engaging. So you know how in PowerPoint, when you print, you can select print slides or print note pages and you do that with the good bathroom. Yes, okay. you can print the slides, but mostly it, it will go with directly with what you're... Okay, gotcha. That's why if you do the smaller slides and you print it out, it's going to put it that size on the paper. Okay. So, like, if you do the name plate, it's going to keep it that size. All right. Thank you. I'm going to give you five minutes to do what you want on it, and then play with it. I'll walk around, see if anybody needs any help with it. Thank you. You can go to the slide show. You can show. Yes. Yeah, in your case, I don't. I didn't. You know, I go here. All right. Let me. So if you go to slide. Yeah. Then you didn't see that. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. So if you haven't used it and you want to see how to access it as a slideshow, thank you, George, for that point. Oh yeah. Um. All you're gonna do is click on the word slideshow. Here. It takes you right to you, and just like anything else, it'll either go out at the end or just hit your escape key, and it takes you right back to where you're. 